world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Let's look at this story. The black schoolgirl who was strip searched by the Met police at her school has said she was so traumatised by the incident she's been left wanting to scream, shout, cry or just give up every day just to make this whole incident even more traumatic. Uh, when this strip search happened, the 15-year-old was on her period at the time. She was targeted at a school in Hackney in East London over unfounded suspicions that she had cannabis. A council report found that racism had been a likely factor in her treatment. It's understood that three Met officers were placed under investigation by the police watchdog over the incident. This actually happened in December 2020. They remain on full duties and the Met has apologised for the girl's treatment. But was racism a likely factor in all of this? Leroy Logan is a former superintendent in the Met Police. Leroy, always good to have you on. Afternoon to you. I think we can all probably agree on some fairly salient points on this. This was probably very much against the rule book. It was unconventional. It was distressing. It was outrageous. It should never have happened. It probably breached and broke all manner of protocol in doing so. That, that side of it, I think we can all concur, right? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. The issue that I think maybe, I mean, certainly it pricked my ears up and I, you know, I declare my colours, literally, uh, as a white bloke. Maybe there's something here I'm not getting. And we don't have the full report of what the local authority investigated. But racism being a factor, a likely factor, how do you think somebody would be able to conclude that? Well, you have to look at historically as well. As far back as the uh, Skarma report, and the McPherson report, they've shown that um, black people have been on the, the sharp end of a real draconian enforcement from time to time, um, more likely to be um, searched in the wrong way through stop and search or section 60 roadblocks. Also how the excessive use of handcuffs and tasers. So th this is nothing new and uh, I've been running a, a charity called Void G for the last 20 years to assist young people to know their rights and responsibilities and to work with the police. And they always say they feel over-policed and under-protected in the way that they're experienced with policing on a day-to-day -day basis. So this incident is not a surprise because of officers not knowing their boundaries, not knowing how to appropriately deliver a service, despite a person's culture, background, ethnicity, etc. And so we need, really need to say, well, why is that? Is the culture change necessary? I think so. And that's why the, we need a new commissioner. I think there is real issues around supervision. Are the supervisors, the sergeants and inspectors really assisting their officers to ensure they know their powers and how to um, deliver it in an intelligence-based, balanced basis. Jo and, uh, Leroy, just help me understand this then, because uh, you know I can see that the... I, I don't know what specific rule or law it would be. I mean, the, the first thing I thought was... I mean, there were a number of things that sprang to mind. You know, how on earth was a, a, you know, the, the incident in the first place? How, how did the, the school itself sort of hand over somebody in their care to the care of the police without any other checks being made? Uh, why were the parents not consulted? Do strip searches ever take place outside of a police station anyway and the idea that this was for supposedly for cannabis possession i mean they weren't looking for a firearm for goodness sake for cannabis possession uh, i thought was uh, just beyond belief that it would ever come to this but I, I i suppose i'm still struggling lee right to work out how anybody would deduce this was that there was a racist component i mean that would we have to assume female officers were carrying out this search i think we can probably say that was the one rule that wasn't breached but yeah but what would they have been thinking now? What would your contention well, be? Would they thought, oh, it's just a black girl? Because when we talk about racism and issues with, you know, young black kids and the police, we're nearly always talking about boys, right? Invariably, but you, it, it's not just about the gender of the young person. It's also their ethnicity. So that young lady was the, the subject of a double whammy. She's black and she's female. And we know that institutional racism and institutional sexism is a key issue um, running throughout the Met, especially since 
um, Sarah Everard and, and Nicole and Bieber's incidences. So we, we know it's there. What I think is really important is officers at times can get steeped into the culture that they see black people as a threat. They fear them. And also what the report talks about is the adultification of them. Even though they're younger and they need more safeguarding um, as vulnerable people, they're being seen as adults. And so you will see not only in this case where the young person is subject to a intimate search and it's not just possession it's the smell of cannabis they, they haven't seen any remnants of um, cannabis use or any sort of cannabis honor it's just the smell and a recent IOPC report talked about officers should not be influenced by just the smell of cannabis yeah because they, they've I seen that has been totally misused and it should, it's not enough to have reasonable grounds for a normal search, much less a strip search. I mean, that, that's, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I remember that report as well. And I know there's, you know, th that does divide the room. I know among some officers, because some would say, well, actually, this is, you know, part of our intelligence. It's part of what leads us, are, are not just a hunch. We think there's evidence to investigate. But even, even putting that aside, I, I mean, how could this incident have, how could you not prove that there's racism going on here? That, I, I suppose, is the point. Because we, otherwise we're going to end up in a place where any kid who's not white could cite racism as the reasoning behind it. I mean, this was wrong on every count, but I still don't see how race would play a part. Well, as I said... And it was a schoolgirl, by the way, so they would, have known, they would have roughly known her age, wouldn't they? Of course. Oh, well, if you're not safe in a school, where are you safe? Well, indeed. So there's a, a, indeed. So there's, there's, other fa there's other factors going on here. I mean, this was in Hackney. One assumes that quite a lot of the kids were probably non-white in that school, just looking at a cross-section of that particular community. Uh, the school would have been aware that this was going on as well. So was everybody racist in this or just the police? No, I, no, I, I think there's institutional racism beyond policing in education, health, housing etc but why is it racism leroy that's because, the thing i mean it's a it's a it, it's a clunking at, fundamental horrific error you why is look, it racism because you have to look at what's built up to this if you look at all the reports scarman mcpherson it's called systemic racism yeah institutional racism this is over so, two decades ago of course uh, and surely no, lessons no, have no, been learned since then leroy no 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 that's the thing unfortunately one of the things that the Met talks about is a learning organisation, but it's far from it. It's making the same mistakes over and over again. And that's perpetuated by the culture, which is getting more hostile, more toxic, not only for people outside on the receiving end of the police powers, but also internally. Nothing's moved on the, to the, the extent... Pl that the police isn't more toxic than it's ever been. Come on. I mean, you're, you're on a... Me. You're on a diversity course just about every other week in the police at the moment. Yeah, you're, and it's on a click of a mouse. It's not. Well, it it may gun. well be, but I mean, you're filmed in everything you do, whether it's by a punter in the street or whether it's your own body cam footage or a camera attached to a lamppost. You'd, I've said this to you before, you'd have to be an absolute nut job to be a racist in the police force these days. But unfortunately, some people, especially when they see red or they think they're on behind closed doors and remarkably the, the, the body camera doesn't work, all these sort of things, again, are showing that the culture is influencing all these well-meaningful strategies, the CCTVs and everything, because they, a lot of officers, and, and, and let me say it's the minority of officers, mm. not the majority of officers, the minority of us that still think they're untouchable and they're unaccountable. Okay. And it's because they're not getting the supervision um, that they should have through the, the sergeants and inspectors, given the ethical leadership that's essential. I okay. used to be based at Hackney and I was Mr. Unpopular because I would do those checks and balances. I would hold my officers to account and I wouldn't just be sitting in my office looking at a spreadsheet. I would be out cycling around, walking around to find out what is the impact of the strategies that I have developed in on that borough to deliver it, whether it's my safer neighbour teams, my safer schools officers. All of these things have to be assessed 
in impact, operationally and tactically. You can't just leave it to, oh, my officers, no. And then when they do something wrong, you don't try and double down and say, oh, it's regrettable. You have to say, well, listen, I'm going to do something about it. I am acknowledging that there is systemic racism and there's got to be a change. But if, Leroy, if this girl had been searched, let's say it was at a police station, they had found cannabis, would that no longer have been a racist incident? Is it only seen as racist because they didn't find cannabis? No, no, no. It's racist because of the fact they went into the intimacy of the search. That was an But why is that racist? That could happen with anybody. Every single day as we speak you right now, there's somebody's white, been nicked on the streets of this country and would say the same thing. A, you tell me when a white young lady has been subject to a search like that. It, it, we, we see it all the time. Look at the, uh, a black nurse. She was stopped and searched in her car. And the officers not only got her out of the car and they said she was obstructing them. She then got arrested and detained for 18 hours. But how we still don't know that's because she was black. What else can you say? Because you don't see white nurses being... I mean, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't throw that accusation at Eugene Ter Blanche, for goodness sake. I mean, that would put you in the higher, highest ranking of racists, wouldn't it? Not necessarily. There's different gradations of race. I'm not... Listen, I, I, I'm saying to you, when it comes to being objective and applying their um, duty, it's seen through, historically through all the reports. We're the most reported community in this country that there is systemic racism. It impacts on the culture and the culture- The, the Tony Sewell report different. said there wasn't, of course. Say again? The Tony Sewell report said there wasn't systemic racism. Well, we racism. know that was a whitewash. That's why- Well, he's that's because you didn't agree with it, isn't it? He's just lost this honorary doctorate yeah, because because, so, because somebody had a different opinion to him. It's not. The, listen, the recommendation. Come on, Leroy. That's like quite, North Korea. You've got a different view Ian, to me, so we're going to stop you. Ian, please let me speak. Don't shout me out. Hear me out. I'm not trying to do that. Leroy, Tony Sewell. Tony Sewell's report has been discredited by all. Even the cabinet office dis- distanced itself from it because the recommendations weren't too bad. The issue was the toxic narrative. He it didn't recognise. He didn't recognise. He said we'd moved on from that, and we still have racism. Based on what? At, uh, well, Based they were his. What? They were his findings that he said we were, did, systemic racism. Not unfounded. They were totally unfounded. That's why he's just lost his honorary degree from a university because they want to separate because they didn't yeah they, that's right they didn't like they didn't like his findings listen Leroy uh, we stop there for no other reason than time it's always good to chat on these things and thank you for coming on with us Leroy Logan former superintendent in the Met please good talk, Hot talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. talk radio. listen on your smart speaker watch it live on your smart TV the world headquarters of common sense talk radio